please fall afresh on me. Let this mind be in you. Such a broad topic. So many witnesses that can stand to the positive about Jesus Christ. So many have died standing for God. So many, so many talented people are in the graves today, but they have stood firm with a made up mind to live for God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today, this topic is too much for me. It's too broad. Only God himself can deliver something that you will understand. And in the wee hours of the morning, he gave me a pattern that will help you understand what mind should dwell in you. Yeah. You see, the brain is a powerful, powerful, I don't even want to call it an organ. It's, it's, it's amazing what God has placed in the human body. A bundle of nerves joined together to cause the body to function in so many different ways. The right side of the brain, scientists say, control the regular, excuse me, the left side. The left side of the brain controls our basic functions. You know, how we walk, what we look at, where we go, how we can pick up things, how we eat, movements, all sorts of things that uh, the left side of the brain controls. But the right side of the brain goes even deeper. The right side of the brain is more complex in its nature because it goes into areas that are outside of the brain. Our intellect, our soul, our spirit, our consciousness, our thoughts, our morality, our intuition, our perception, our conception, our capacity to reason, our judgment, our understanding, our wisdom, our genius, our talent, our reasoning, our instinct, our creativity, our intellectual processes all moved into the right side of the brain that help us in our day-to-day -day living, in our day-to-day decision-making. It's amazing that God said, let this mind be in you. But he didn't stop there. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ You see, there are different kinds of minds. There's a humble mind, found in Acts 20, 19. You can read it. Now, there's a fervent mind, found in 2 Corinthians 7, 7. A willing mind, 2 Corinthians 8, 12. A sound mind, 2 Timothy 1, 7. A ready mind, 1 Peter 5, 2. A pure mind, 2 Peter 3, 1. All of these minds that you may choose are in the mind of Christ. Yes. In the mind of Christ. But there are other types of minds that are being presented to us for a specific reason. A despiteful mind found in Ezekiel 36, 5. A reprobate mind found in Romans 1.28. And the word reprobate means totally 
bad, corrupt, a condemned mind. Carnal mind, found in Romans 8, 7. A blind mind, found in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. A fleshy mind, Colossians 2, 18. A defiled mind, Titus 1, 15. These types of minds can be incorporated in the human body. You can choose this type of mind, but there is a being out there whom I wish not to condemn this pulpit by speaking of him, but you must be warned of his great power, of his cunning ability. You must be warned of the ways that he is able to manipulate words to get you to choose a different type of mind. A mind that is against God. That is, that is his purpose. Now I have a, a deep respect for the animal kingdom. And I've watched the animal kingdom on wild kingdom. I've watched the animal kingdom on uh, Discovery Channel. And I see that animals, animals that possess great power, we can't even stand up against them. But fear is in their heart for mankind, unless they're cornered, unless they are threatened, unless they are challenged. You see, I look at the lion. The lion is called the king of beasts only because he can sit back and watch his harem catch the food and he be the first to eat it. But the lion is such a powerful beast weighing 600 to 800 pounds of raw killing power Everything about his body is meant for killing and devouring. Canine teeth of three to four inches, claws of two to three inches long that grasp a hold of its prey. And once it lays its grasp upon its prey, it cannot get away unless there's some divine intervention. <laughs> You see, a lion from, great, from a great distance is able to let out a roar that lets animals in the area know he is present, which strikes fear and terror in the hearts of the animals in the area. At night when you hear this roar, everybody is on edge, not knowing where this enemy will strike. But thank God, animals that are weak, animals that are fearful, animals that are sick and dying are usually the ones, oh, also the animals that are young and tender, are usually the ones that are prey, that fall prey to such a lion and all the animals that are uh, considered beasts of prey. They prey on the weak. They prey on the young and the sick. And believe it or not, that is what the devil also does. Because he is described in the word of God as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if you are fearful, if you are weak in mind, if you are troubled, if you don't know where to turn, he will pounce on you just like the lion pounces. 
And there's no way you can get away unless you prepare yourself ahead of time. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus says, fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Yes. Fear not. When you fall on your knees and pray, that old devil cannot stay in your presence. God has placed everything at your disposal so that when he comes in the midst, in your house, wherever you are, when he comes, there are things that you can do that will cause him to flee because God has placed in your heart a power, a power, a power that the devil cannot shake. God has placed in your heart a power that he won't move. He allows you to exercise this power. And it's called choice. Amen. Choice. Sounds so simple, the word choice. If you make the choice for right, the devil can't stop you. If you make your choice for wrong, God won't stop you. It's against his government to stop you. He can influence you. He can give you things to help you understand that this is not the right choice. But he won't stop you. Because that's your power. If you choose your bed in hell, God won't stop you. But the devil will rejoice knowing that there is one more that he can bring reproach upon Christ. One more. In the book Desire of Ages, written under the chapter called Victory, it says that there was a paragraph in this chapter that caught my eye a long time ago in college, and I never forgot it. In the regular books, it's on page 125. In the little cheap paperback books, it's on page one, page 60. And the paragraph goes like this. The tempter can never compel us to do evil. He cannot control minds unless they are yielded to his control. The will must consent. Faith must let go its hold upon Christ before Satan can exercise his power upon us. But every sinful desire we cherish affords him a foothold. Every point in which we fail to meet the divine standard is an open door by which he can enter to tempt and destroy us. And every failure or defeat on our part gives occasion for him to, re to reproach Christ. <laughs> the word reproach means blame, rebuke, accuse, reprove, bring shame and disgrace upon our creator, the one who gave us life. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose you this day. Because we don't know what tomorrow may bring. We don't know what the next hour will bring in our lives. Because the devil is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now, I see these animals devour other animals on television. 
And man, some of them don't even wait for them to die. They're eating while these animals are bleating and crying out for help. And that's how severe the devil is with mankind. Look on the news. Every night for a whole year, at least five to six people have been shot. Every night, somebody is dying. Somebody's getting hurt. Just look. Open your eyes and see that this being is not playing with mankind. He means business. Right now, I believe we still have a hedge around us. Yes. Book of Job. God is protecting us. But one day, the winds of strife will be let loose. The four winds from the four corners of the earth will be let loose as a test for us and our faithfulness to God. These are elements that, that dwell on the right hand of the, of, of the right side of the brain. Faithfulness. Your faithfulness to God is exercised by the right side of the brain. Faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Man, if you dig deep in this book, time will move so fast like it moved this morning. I mean, point after point comes to you and it fills your mind with joy to know that Jesus, the Lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world, while we were yet sinners and, and blasphemers and accusers, while we were, were walking in our own way, Jesus decided to die for us. He made that choice. And only his blood, only his blood could cleanse us from our own unrighteousness. I serve a risen Savior. Oh, he's in the world today. I know that he is living. I don't care what man may say. I see his hands of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's oh. always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me. Yes, that's right. A long life's narrow way. Oh, he lives. He lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives? I can feel him right in my heart. You know, this brain is considered the heart of all things. Every emotion. This heart here cannot control anything. It doesn't do anything but beat and send blood. But the brain controls the sinus node of the heart which is an uncontrollable part of the heart. You, you cannot help it but live as long as that sinus node is working. That's the right side of the brain controlling that part. You have no control of that. How many of you can stop your breathing today? How many of you can stand and just deliberately stop breathing? You have no control of it. The brain has control over that part of the body that you have no control over. You can't stop. But I say that to say, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit is in control of our lives. He says, take no thought for tomorrow. Don't worry. <laughs> Fear not, for I am with thee. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, 
Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Amen. That where I am, there you may be also. Amen. I think of one of the many witnesses in the Bible. And the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Because they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day that the flood came. In spite of Noah's warning for 120 years, preaching the same sermon over and over again, by faith Noah preached. <coughs> he preached to the world, to everybody, for a witness until everybody in that part of the world, to all nations in that part of the world. But they kept going in the way. They kept doing the things that their carnal minds decided to do. Until the day that the door closed, was closed by an angel, and the first drop that hit, when I say the first drop, it was the first drop that man had ever seen come from the sky. That let those people outside know that the jig was up. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> oh, my goodness, you know that when the first drop hit, they had never heard of rain before. The earth was always watered by the dew. But when water fell from the sky, one drop, two drops, drop, 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 a deluge. Then they realized Noah was right. We've got to get in that ark. And they all come running to the ark, banging on the ark. Let me in, let me in. But the door was closed by an angel. And no man could open it. Here we have a comparison now. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. God sees now, and you see also, that the wickedness of man is great in the earth. That every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You know, when, when mankind gets to that point, and we are rapidly moving in that direction, when mankind gets to that point, it begins to grieve God once again. And I say grieve God to his heart once again that he created man. But he promised that he would never destroy the earth by a flood. But he never said anything about fire. It's going to be fire next time to cleanse the earth. The Bible says that it repent, the Lord repented that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. Matthew 24, 37, 38 and 39. As it was in the days of Noah. Matthew 24, prophecy chapter of the New Testament. 37, 38, and 39. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. He promised that he would come back. But the sign is the days of Noah, the wickedness that shall abound in the earth. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, 
Now, we're not just talking about just eating. Like, we have to eat. Okay? We're talking about partying. And that's all we do is eat and party and drink and get drunk and party and lose our minds in partying and, and rabble-rousing.